a sandy beach. A sandy beach. The sand is tan. The sand is tan. Very good. And as you stand on this beach, look around the beach. What do you see around the beach? Are you alone there? Are there others? Come on. I'm alone. Very good. The water's calm. The water is calm. What color is this water? The water's blue. Mm -hmm. I think it's the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico. There's no waves. Mm -hmm. And as you stand on this beach, I want you to notice if you have a body on this beach. Do you feel like you have a physical body as you're observing this beach? Do you feel perhaps that you have, that you're walking on this beach? What do you imagine? Do you have a physical body? Or are you observing it? I'm floating. I'm Rob's floating. Very, old, Very good. So I want you to just feel yourself as you float. And as you float, where do you go? Where do you go on this beach? What else do you see? Trees. What kind of trees do you see? Palm trees. Palm trees. Mm -hmm. And can you get a sense of the temperature? What does it feel like? It's warm. Warm. Mm -hmm. A lot of shrubs. A lot of shrubs. Do you feel that this beach is in a populated area? Or do you feel that it's kind of a lone beach? What does it feel like? No. No. A lone beach. There's no, nothing there. No. Mm -hmm. How far up are you from this beach? Are you floating far above or close? Close. Close. All right. So let's see what else you find on this beach. I'd like for you to continue going through this beach and tell me everything that you see along the way. What else do you see? The more you describe, the more you'll see. What does this beach feel like to you? What emotions do you feel as you see this beach? Connect with your emotions. Peaceful. Peaceful. Mm -hmm. It's serene. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful place, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So as you look at this beach, are you drawn more to the land or the water? The water. The water. The sun setting. Mm -hmm. The sun setting. Let's see what we find over the water. Can you float over the water? Mm hmm What do you see in the water? Take a look. Is there anything in the water that looks interesting? Anything you notice? All right. Very good. So let's move on and see what else we see on this beach. Calls your attention. What's the next thing that seems interesting in the speech? Is it just the piece of it? So I'd like for you now to just enjoy the feeling of this peace, of this serenity. And I'd like for you to just capture it. Capture the feeling of this peacefulness, of this serene feeling. This could be something that you can access any time that you feel that you're not peaceful, that you're not serene. You can come back to this scene any time you wish and absorb this beautiful, beautiful scene. 
untouched. No one there. Very good. And now that you've seen this place, is there anything else that's important about this place? No. All right. So we want to find out a little bit about where it is that you live. We've now seen the beach. We're going now to go through time and space to find another memory. Another memory that has affected you. I'm going to count from five back to one. When I get to number one, I'll touch your forehead and I want you to be at another memory. So take a deep breath in now, five, going through time and space to another memory, maybe a sad memory or a happy memory. Four, drifting and floating through time and space. Three, allow the images to come, the memory. Two, almost there now. Begin to feel the environment of where you are. And one, be there now. Just your first impression. Are you indoors? Or are you outdoors? What is this memory? Feel it. In Boston. You're what? In Boston. In Boston. Very good. So look around you and tell me. Do you have a body or are you floating? A body. A body. Let's take a look at your feet. What do your feet look like? Look down. What are you wearing? What do you see on your feet? Brown boots. Brown boots. Mm hmm Are these new boots or are they worn? No, they're like almost like animal skin. Boots. Like animal skin boots. Very good. And now let's take a look at the rest of your legs. What do your legs look like? A male. Okay. Wearing tan pants with knickers. What else? It just has a lot of busyness. It's like bustling. A lot of bustling. Mm -hmm. What are you wearing on the top? Look at your shirt. Do you have a shirt on? You may notice your sleeves. I feel like I'm wearing a wool jacket. A wool jacket, okay. Is it a long jacket or a short jacket? It's waist length, it's mm -hmm. tight. Mm hmm. I feel like I'm near water and ships. Mm hmm. Do you have anything to do with ships? No. Mm. Take a look at your head, your hair, your appearance. What do you look like? Are you young? Are you old? Take a look at your face. I think I'm in my 30s. Mm hmm. Your 30s? Brown hair. Brown hair. Is it long or short? Long. Mm hmm. How are you wearing that hair? A ponytail. Mm hmm. And take a look and see if you're carrying anything. Look at your hands. Are you carrying anything? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Okay, very good. So now, let's find out about what's going on around you. 
What do you see around you? You said there's a lot of bustling around. What's happening in this place? Trade. There's trade. Mm-hmm. Money ships. Mm-hmm. And what do you do there? I think I'm a visitor. I'm a visitor. Okay. So let's find out a little bit about why you're visiting this place. Let's move through the city and see the reason why you're there. Where is it that you're going to and the purpose of your visit? And you'll just know. You'll understand. The more you talk, the more you'll understand. Connect with your emotions and tell me how you feel as a visitor to this place. Do you feel comfortable here? I feel a sense... Of anticipation. Okay. What do you imagine that you're anticipating? What are you waiting for? Have you come to visit this place for a reason? I feel like I've been sent here. You've been sent here. Okay. Very good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you close that scene. And when we open up the scene once again, you will be in the place where you were sent to be. Take a deep breath in now and be at the next scene. See it now. Why have you been sent here? <coughs> so you're in a bar, mm-hmm. pub. Mm-hmm. I'm in a bar and a pub. What is the purpose of your visit to the pub? That's rebellion. Mm-hmm. Tell me more. I feel like I've been sent here to gather information. Mm-hmm. What is it that you're gathering? What kind of information? I'm trying to get the sense of the seriousness. Mm-hmm. So I'd like for you to listen around and see, feel it. What is the sense? What are you capturing from this place? Frustration. Mm-hmm. Who's feeling this frustration? Depression. Mm-hmm. Oppression of the people. Yes. Mm-hmm. How does that make you feel hearing all of this? Observer. Like an observer. Mm-hmm. I don't feel the same sense of frustration. Okay. As the other people. 
Because you're not from this place, are you? No. No. All right. So is there anything important that happens in this pub that you need to witness or know about? Or have you gathered all of the information you need? I think, I think I see what I need to see. All right. So I'd like for you to close that scene now, and let's go to the next important scene. The scene in which you use this information. Be there now. Are you alone or with others? Use your senses. Where have you taken this information? The more you talk, the more we'll be able to see and understand. What has happened? I'm in the wilderness. I'm in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Are you alone in the wilderness? No. No. Who's there with you? I want you to use all of your senses and know what you're doing in that wilderness. I want you to acclimate yourself, your body, into this place. Are you on foot? Yes. Mm -hmm. Take a look around you and see if there's someone walking with you. Or are you walking by yourself? I'm not walking. I'm in a lake. I'm in a lake. It's an encampment. Mm hmm Who's around this encampment? Who's there? Other men. Mm-hmm. Who are these men? Seems like they're organizing. Mm-hmm. Have you used your information for these men? I've relayed the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Is that affecting these men at all? Do you have anything to do with these men? Yeah, I think I'm part of some lot bigger than me. Mm-hmm. So I'd like for this scene to unfold and find out what happens. What happens next? I'm on a horse. I'm on a horse. Mm -hmm. Where are you going on this horse? I'm sure you're going south. Going south. Mm -hmm. I'm not alone. Look around you. How many do you see with you? Many. Many. Are you dressed any differently now on that horse? I'm dressed the same. The same. And how are the others dressed? The same. The same as you? Mm -hmm. Similar, not the same. Similar. And what is the purpose of riding together today? Where are you going? What is south of you that you need to go to? I feel like Trenton. It's 
Mm-hmm. You'll know. What is in Trenton that you need to go to? What's there? Decision makers. Mm-hmm. The more you talk, the more you'll see. I feel like this is a lead up. It's a lead up? To the Revolutionary War. Okay. In different bands of revolutionaries are trying to organize. Mm hmm. Very good. And it feels like the flashpoint is going to be Boston. Mm hmm. That's where it's most intense. Mm hmm. And I'll sit out there and see how big it is. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you now to find your way to your destination. And let's find out what happens with the information you've gathered, with all of these coming towards these people. What happens next? Where do you go? Allow the scene to unfold. Be there now. Go back north. <coughs> I go back north. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you alone or with others? No, with a lot of others. It's almost like an army. Like an army. But it's not organized. Mm-hmm. It's just a lot of men and horses. Mm-hmm. So I want you to use your breath now. Use your breath to go deeper and deeper into the scene. As you breathe out, allow yourself to just float deeper into this knowing into this personality, into this body of this man on this horse, understanding exactly what's happening and your part. And tell me what happens. As the scene unfolds, just tell me what's happening. What do you experience? What's, what do you feel? Where are you? North Jersey, maybe Connecticut. Mm hmm. Tell me more. What are you doing there? Rallying people. Mm hmm. How is it that you do that? Where do you go to rally these people? A small town. Mm hmm. What do you tell these people? War is coming. War is coming. 
What do you need the people to do? Prepare. Make your weapons. Mm-hmm. Organize. Mm-hmm. How are you received by these people? They know. They know. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel knowing that you're doing this with them? That you're preparing them? I feel apprehensive. Apprehensive. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there anything else from this scene that's important that you need to take from it? No. All right. So let's close this scene completely. And I want you to now move to the next important scene of that life. Something that made an impact on you. Go ahead and be there now. Allow yourself to see around. Are you indoors or outdoors? Where are you? Are you indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Mm -hmm. Are you alone or with others? Use all of your senses. You'll know. With others. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Look around. Describe this place for me. Just a lot of wounded people. A lot of wounded people. It's a camp. Mm -hmm. What has happened? There's been a battle. Mm -hmm. And we did not fare well. Tell me more. What happens? People are losing the will to fight. They're losing the will to fight. Mm -hmm. There's no fear. Mm -hmm. What is your role in all of this? What do you do? I'm not injured. You're not injured. Are you part of this battle? Or are you an outsider? Take a look and see. What is your role? Has anything changed about you? I feel like I'm older. You're older. Mm -hmm. Look at your body. I feel like... What do you feel like? Oh man, I feel like... <clears throat> My conviction is going deeper. Mm-hmm. Tell me more about that. I don't share in the fear. Mm-hmm. I hear from the wounded. Mm-hmm. I keep feeling this 
need to go north. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I'd like for you to go ahead and flow with the next scene and tell me what happens. Where do you go? Have you gone north? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Somewhere in New England. Are you alone? others with you also. Acclimate yourself into that body. Just know. What is the reason why you needed to go north? Who were those around you? The more you talk, the more you'll be able to see and understand. feel about the wounded? They were civilians. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel, knowing that? I'm proud of them. Mm -hmm. <coughs> You're proud of them for fighting? Yes. Mm -hmm. I feel this movement north is more Part of a military movement. Mm -hmm. And I'd like for you to just know what kind of position you have as you're going through this. Are you, do you have any decision making responsibilities? No. No. But as you take a look at all of these, <clears throat> all of these people, what is your role? Is it a soldier? I think I'm morphing into one. Mm -hmm. So as you morph into one, just I'd like for you to tell me what it is that you look like as you... I think it was... The injured people, they were civilians. What people are civilians? The people that were injured. Mm -hmm. And it's galvanizing the more of a military movement. Mm -hmm. So look at yourself now. Has your attire changed? And wearing blue. Wearing blue. Mm hmm. Tell me more. Head north on horseback. Okay. So you can fast forward through this until you get to your destination. And let's see where it is that you need to go up north. What's happening? Be there now. <sighs> What is up north? There's a battle. There's a battle. Mm -hmm. There's ships in the harbor and they're firing cannons. Mm -hmm. 
Where are these ships coming from? Who are these that are in the ships? The British. The British. They're flying British flags. They're flying. Mm -hmm. How many ships do you see? <sighs> 20. 20 ships. At least. Mm -hmm. Probably more. Where are they firing their cannons? Where do you see them shooting them? At the land. Mm -hmm. Are you in any sort of danger from this cannon? It's a bombardment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been danger. I'm on the receiving end of it. Mm -hmm. What do you and yours that are with you do? Is there any way to fight back? A lot of confusion, mm -hmm. explosions, just cannons. I don't know if they're effective. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happens next. next we're attacked by British army mm -hmm. goods on land on the land mm -hmm. we're on a hill mm -hmm. what are you doing there Are you on foot? On horseback? I'm on my belly. On your belly? What's happened? We're outnumbered. We're surrounded. Mm -hmm. Detach yourself from that body now and just view it like an observer. It's an impossible situation. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're on a hilltop. Mm -hmm. We're being bombarded. You can see the scene? From the mm -hmm. water by ships. Mm -hmm. And we're surrounded. You can see this from a bird's eye view. Mm -hmm. How is this affecting you? What happens next? I assume I die because there's no way out of this. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to see the end of your life and find out how it is <coughs> that body died. How did it die there? I you got shot in the head. Shot in the head. So I'd like for you to go ahead and see the one who shot you. See the one that shot you. And took a look into his eyes. The eyes are the window to the soul. Do you recognize those eyes in the lifetime now of Dan? Do those eyes seem to It's hard to see you shot me because it was chaotic. Okay. Was it random? I don't know if All right. shot me. Very good. People. All right, so let's see what happens after you're shot. Where does your soul go? Where do you go after this? I'd like for you to follow your travels out of that body and tell me what you see as you detach from it. 
Look all around you. What do you see? Do you stay on that battlefield? Or do you move along? Where does your soul go? What's the next thing that you see without a body? Blue sky. Blue sky, very good. What else? Keep telling me everything that you experience as you leave that incarnation. I think I'm floating. You're floating. Now in this beautiful floating state, with no more body, you can look back at that lifetime and understand why it was lived and what your purpose was in that life. It'll just come to you. What was the purpose of living that lifetime? What did you need to do in that life? Did you have a purpose? Were there lessons? Look at this, get a snapshot of that life. What's that life all about? What was the meaning of that life? What comes to mind? Freedom. Freedom. Do you feel that you had freedom in that life? No. Mm hmm. So, what did you learn? What did you take from it? Fighting for freedom. Fighting for freedom. So, how is it that this lifetime that you just experienced is affecting the lifetime of Dan? How has this fight for freedom affected his life in this incarnation? Is he fighting for freedom too? He's fighting for freedom from... bondage of addiction. Mm-hmm. It's almost the same thing, isn't it? It's freedom from something. Uh-huh. Did he feel that in that life he was oppressed? Or was he detached from it? I think he was detached from it. I think Mm -hmm. it was ideological. Mm -hmm. So why is it that... He was fighting for an idea. For an idea. So he came into this life now and he's not detached from these addictions. Why has he chosen this life to be so involved? So captured with all of these people around him. That are all fighting for the freedom. 
freedom of alcohol, freedom of pills, of drugs. Why has he chosen this lifetime? Like this. Does this soldier have any feelings about being so detached? I think because of this lifetime. There's... Help available. There's help available this time. Effective methods mm -hmm. of defeating addiction. Mm -hmm. So in the other lifetime, it wasn't addiction. It was a government that was oppressing. How does this compare to that? Why has he chosen again to fight for? freedoms has he chosen this has he chosen this addiction Yes. So if you would, I'd like to ask for his guide to accompany him. And we're going to go back in time to before he was born as Dan. I'd like for him to, as I count from five back to one, go back in leaps of time to before he was even in his mommy's tummy to where he was making a decision as to the conditions in which he was born into the addictions the personalities the family in which he was born into so begin now to travel back in time now and let's connect now with the guides and the teachers that will guide this soul in this lifetime of dead. Tell me where it is that you meet. Where are you? What is this place? Trust your first impression. What comes to mind? What's the first thing that you experience in this place? Connect with the feelings, connect with the personality. What's the first thing you experience? Are you alone or with others? I feel like I'm alone. I feel like I'm alone. <coughs> What's around you? I feel a sense of nothingness. Nothingness. That's a great place to be. In this state of nothingness, I'd like for you to just feel yourself floating. Just allow yourself to float. Nothing to do but just be. And as you float in this space, we're going to invite your guides to step forward 
and take you to the next step, the next place, the place in which you make decisions. Guide me through this and tell me what happens. Where do you go? Where do you go from the nothingness? Connect with your senses. What do you feel in this place? So what we're going to do is we're going to go deeper into this nothingness. Go deeper and deeper. I'm going to count from 10 down to 1. And as I count, I want you to go ahead and release any feelings that you're feeling, any apprehension, any thoughts. Just allow them to float away. 10. Going deeper and deeper with it. Nine, down, eight, releasing and letting go of any expectation, seven, relaxing the mind, just floating, six, down, deeper and deeper to sleep, four, deeper and deeper, three, through time and space, two, just being, and one. Be there now. As I tap your third eye, allow the information to come up as to why it is that Dan chose the addictions in his life. I want you to see the picture form. What did Dan need to have? Addiction in every part of his life, family, himself, friends. What was the lesson? What was the purpose? These, did these addictions come from Dan? Or did it come from an outside source? Where did these addictions come from? Did he create them? Or was he influenced by them? All right. So I want you to go ahead and do a scan of this body. And I'd like for you to tell me what kind of color, of shape, of texture does this addiction look like in the body of Dan? What does the addiction look like? What pops up? Is it a color? Is it a shape? What does this influence look like? Darkness. Darkness, all right. So let's look and see the, at this darkness and tell me where that darkness is in the body of Dan.
Where is this darkness? Where, do, where does it begin? The soul. The soul? Is it the whole soul that's being dark? Where? Hmm? There's a purpose. There's a purpose for this darkness? All right. Let's go deeper. And I'd like for you to dive into this darkness and find out what the purpose is. It'll jump right out. The purpose is to be a beacon. Purpose is to be a beacon. But if his purpose is to be a beacon, why has he created darkness around this beacon? Darkness can be defeated. Ah. Okay. So has he set up a battle in this lifetime? Yes. All right. So what has he learned about himself battling this darkness? They can be defeated. They can be defeated. Does he need to fight this battle his entire life? No. No. So, is he ready now to defeat this darkness? Yes. All right. Does this darkness have a personality to it? Or did he create this darkness himself? Take a look and see. Is this darkness something he created? Or is it something outside of him? He creates it. He creates it. So let's find out when he created this darkness. No, he didn't create it. He didn't create it, did he? He agreed to it. He agreed to it, okay. So let's find out when he agreed to this darkness. Would you take Dan back to when he first agreed? to allow this darkness to shadow his beacon. Let's go back in time, five, traveling through time and space to find this agreement, four, three, two, and one, know it. Was this before he came into this life or after? Before. Before. Who did he make this agreement with? Source. What? Source. Source. Mm hmm. So let's find out why Source agreed to give him this darkness. Can you please connect now with Source? Why has Source agreed to darken his beacon? To help others out of the darkness. To help others out of the darkness. So by him living his life in darkness and finding his way out, help others find their way out? He's a beacon. He's a beacon. So he shines his light for others to get out. So why is it that this beacon keeps falling back into the darkness himself. Because if he's a beacon, he's like a lighthouse, and if those ships in the night need to see the light, we don't need clouds fogging up the light. If it was easy, it wouldn't be respected. Ah, okay. Is he being respected now? Yes. Okay. 
So does he need to continue with these addictions? He needs to continue on the path of recovery. He needs to continue on the path of recovery. Who is assisting him? To be him? a role model. To be a role model, okay. Now we know that he does not travel alone, just like when he was in that army trying to defeat the British. He didn't do it alone. He had an army with him. What is his army now in helping shine the light so others can find their way. Who's helping him? The others that are walking the same walk. The same walk. Mm -hmm. It's desperately needed in these times. What is it? It's desperately needed in these times. It's desperately needed. So he has come at this time to live this experience in order for him to help others? How's he doing? He's doing well. He's doing well. Mm -hmm. And the reason he has fallen back into addiction, is that on purpose? It's part of his process. Okay. So by falling back, is he showing others that he too is in recovery? Mm -hmm. Yes. Does he understand that? Can he understand that now? That he is an example of what it's like to come out? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Now I know that he has found a, a sponsor that is helping him. Has that sponsor been chosen especially for this job? Yes. Mm -hmm. What does he need to know about his sponsor? I have faith. Belief. Mm -hmm. Follow direction. To follow direction. Okay, good. Trust. To trust. But even though he is coming out of this and he has someone who's helping him, he wants to know how much longer he's going to be stuck in this. It's almost like he's not moving forward. He needs to help others. He needs to help others. Is that the passion that he needs to bring out? Yes, the that's passion. what he's not doing. Okay, so what would you advise him to do? How can he get unstuck and moving forward? He needs to reach out. Mm -hmm. To others who suffer mm -hmm. from any kind of addiction. How will that help Dan? Fulfill his purpose. Mm -hmm. So his purpose is just to be a beacon to help these others. Is there anything stopping him from doing this? Fear. Fear. What is this fear? Where does this fear come from? Abandonment. Abandonment. Mm -hmm. Let's dig deeper and find out how this fear began. Would you please take Dan back in time and show him when the beginning of this abandonment began? Go ahead and see the picture. What are you showing, Dan? Birth. Birth. All right. Tell me what's happening at birth. Connect with the senses of all those around. It was an unplanned pregnancy. 
unplanned pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So what is the attitude around? Families in crisis. Mm -hmm. It's not a hard pregnancy. By both parents. Mm -hmm. So connect with your emotions, connect with your thoughts. How is that affecting this baby? He's unwanted. What is it? He's not wanted. Not wanted. He's a burden. Mm -hmm. Now it seems to me that this beacon of light came here for a purpose. And he chose this family to come into. Why did he choose a family that didn't even want this beacon? To build character. To build character. Is this something that he chose in himself? To create resolve. Mm -hmm. Create resolve. Mm -hmm. Strength. Strength. Independence. Mm-hmm. Dependence. And yet, knowing that he came here to build character, to create resolve, to be strong and independent, why is it that when this baby was born, all he felt was abandonment? Knowing that, coming in. Can he see that he chose this very difficult family situation? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did he have any connection with mom? No. no. Did he have any connection with dad? No. Because this beacon stands alone, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. So this abandonment feeling that he's been carrying all along, what has that done to him? How has that held him back? It's created a false sense of fear. False sense of fear. So now that he understands... It's an illusion. That it's all an illusion. Does he need to hold this fear of abandonment anymore? No. No. Can he forgive his mother and father yes. for thinking these things? All right. So I'm going to put my hand over your chest, and I want you to pull out all of those feelings that have been held in this body, trapped in there, of feeling abandoned, neglected, not wanted, Pull all that out, because this unplanned pregnancy was used as a vehicle for this soul to come in and shine his light. He came in here bold as a light, whether they wanted it or not. And it's not his responsibility to hold on to something that he was feeling when he was a tiny baby and forgot. Forgot how strong the soul is, forgetting the purpose. And tell me when I have all of that illusion, all of that false illusion of abandonment inside. Pull it all out. Tell me when I have it. Yeah. Let's pull it all out. And now that we've pulled all of that illusion out of there, understanding full well that this whole soul chose a family who specifically did not want any more children so that he can build himself strong. He found the strongest boot camp of life, the toughest boot camp, his family, to build, to build his character. What would we like to put now in that space of all of that that we pulled out, what would you like to put instead? Joy. Let's put joy in there. I want you to feel that joy going into your heart.
filling your heart and as your heart beats feel that joy as it flows through your body it's almost as if every cell in this body is smiling with joy and knowing how smart the soul was to pick such a difficult difficult life to build this very strong character so that this beacon of light could shine so strongly so brightly setting an example for others picking up all those experiences from his life from his family so he can use that to help others and I'm going to touch your forehead and seal that in now that we have joy in your heart is there anything else that this heart needs gratitude very good let's put lots of gratitude in there and I'd like for you to go ahead and tell me all of the things that this heart is grateful for what is the gratitude that's going in feel it sobriety mm-hmm. sobriety healthy children healthy children the same wife same wife mm-hmm. it's a beautiful thing isn't it and I'm going to touch your forehead and let's seal that gratitude in knowing that there is always something very very powerful about grace about feeling grateful that when we feel grateful for things we focus on that that we've created and now let's take a look and see how does this body now feel when we've done this is there that darkness around this anymore no what is around this body now I'd like for you to just shine a light on this body and tell me how is this body shining now how does this beacon look I see bright light bright light very good so now that we know that this soul came in here to help others to be a beacon of light let's find out why he has felt in the past so disengaged so unmotivated to move forward is there anything else holding him back from fulfilling this purpose no. no very good and now that he understands this I know that he wants to know a little bit about what happens to him when he's asleep when he's in a different state what happens to Dan when he sleeps where does he go he doesn't remember anything he doesn't remember his dreams it's happening in his dream state Does he connect with anyone? Does he need to connect or remember his dreams? I think that'll change now. That'll change now without all that fogginess around them that darkness good and he has a question now about growing spiritually he was told that in order to grow spiritually he needs to treat everyone with kindness patience tolerance and forgiveness is that sufficient to challenge all of this evil in this world yes yes so he's on the right path yes. mm -hmm. and we know that when he was in a different life he was battling even then has he come now into this lifetime with different wisdom with a different tactic yes yes and who is his army now that helps him does he have guides yes yes 
So if you would, if he is able, can you give him a picture or a sense of what his guides look like or feel like? so that in the future he can connect even easier. Yes. Yes. Go ahead and connect him now with his guides. What is it, are his guides willing to do now that this beacon is shining without this darkness around? How can they help even more? He'll be more open. He'll be more open. Have they been talking to him all this time? Yes. Okay. Was he hearing them? No. No. So now, without this dark fog around him, he's wide open? Yes. Okay. Will he be able to connect better with those that he's willing to help? Yes. Good. So is this part of the reason why he came here today? Yes. To learn about that. Good. So, now that we know that, Dan was raised under very strict religion. What does he need to know about religion moving forward now so he can help others who are having the same questions? God is love. God is love. That is all. That is all. Very good. And now? Is there anything else that you would like to tell Dan today that I haven't asked? Any message that you would like to give him? I just need to start eating healthier. He needs to start eating healthier. Exercising. Uh huh. And I know that he has had issues with his neck. What kind of exercise would be best for Dan? Walking. Walking. Mm -hmm. So can I ask on his behalf for a guide that will assist him, that will motivate him to go out there and start walking, enjoying nature, eating better, helping him select food that will help his body, keep it bright? And what do you anticipate happening once Dan starts to shine his light, eat he healthy, begin to use his body? What do you anticipate his future be like? He's got the potential to help thousands of people. He has the potential. Very good. Is there anything else that need, Dan needs to hear today? Or are we complete? Complete. Very good. Thank you so much. Completely alert, feeling wonderful all over. That was amazing. <laughs> you feel good? I do. Mm. I do. That is crazy. Wow. You did very well, Dan. Did I? Very well. How long do you think this session was? How did it feel to you? Including over there? No, just, just this. This part. It was short? Half hour. Half hour? Mm -hmm. mm. We are right now on an hour and 25, 26 minutes. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you did a lot longer than you thought. How's your body feel? I feel good. I feel good. Mm -hmm. That is crazy. <laughs> Al, I could see the shift. I was. Just, I felt like. I felt like I was in a smoke-filled room. Mm -hmm. When I was in that state of nothingness. Mm -hmm. And it like, it's like a light came on. Interesting. It's crazy. That's wild. Mm -hmm. This is legit. <laughs> <laughs> So cool. So <coughs> something that you want to keep private or do you think that this would help others 
Yeah, no, man. Is there anything personal in here that you feel? My life's an open book, Alan. Yeah, it's an open book. Right. Yeah. I, it has to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If, I can't keep any secrets. They're poison for me. That's who you are, huh? Mm -hmm. You're a light. You're shining. You did fabulous. Fabulous. Awesome. Excellent. So, Dan. <laughs> that was amazing. So, tell everybody what it felt like. Uh, it's so hard to explain. It felt like... Um, Originally, it felt very dark, and um, disconnected, and like it didn't make a lot of sense. Well, you were in the Revolutionary War when yeah. we first started, right? And like it was, it was it, like that wasn't making sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, but it didn't need to make sense because the whole sense that what it was is that you were there, kind of like defeating. You know, it, it was. But I think what that did was kind of like prepare the battlefield. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. then when you, um, ask to speak to my spirit guides, mm -hmm. I felt that that's when I felt like I was in like a smoky room, like black smoky room. I couldn't see it. Was, ah. I just saw nothing. You know what I mean? Yes. I felt nothing. It was yeah. just like mm -hmm. nothingness, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I don't know, man. Something just took over and mm -hmm. started talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when that happened... That was a shift? Like, my whole life started to make sense. You know what I mean? Like, really. Like, I mean, I've battled addiction. Well, since, tell everybody since about I was 13 this. 13 years old. Tell everybody what kind of addiction we're talking I'm about. I'm an alcoholic. I'm an opiate addict. You were. I was. Well, <laughs> you know. You're still battling. I'm recovered. Yeah. Um... I go to meetings, I have a sponsor, I work the steps. Mm -hmm. Struggle with God. And that's how I found out. I started watching YouTube videos of people that had near-death experiences. And I stumbled upon her site. And I was fascinated by it. And it's legit. It is 100% legit. I'm the youngest of nine kids, you know what I mean? Grew up fighting. And... Uh, yeah. It's just like... When the spirit guide started talking, it all made sense. Like, I could mm -hmm. see, like, this makes so much sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and, and the interesting thing, Dan, is that even though we, as listeners, aren't getting it, you're getting it. Totally. So you may not be expressing everything that's going on in you, but you're getting it. Right? I just know, like... Drugs and alcohol are such a big problem in this country. I see it mm -hmm. all over the place. Yeah. And like I was a firefighter for since I was 23 years old and my career ended in 2013. I suffered a career ending injury and I've been kind of stuck in this place where it's like, I don't feel like I have a purpose anymore because I was good at fighting fires. And like, that was one of the questions I asked Al about what my purpose was. And like, you know, being an alcoholic and a drug addict in recovery, like that is my purpose. You know what I mean? To help to find people. You know what I mean? Like I could probably save more lives doing that than I did in the emergency services. Amazing. Amazing, huh? Yes. So now and I was oblivious to it. I was like so stuck in like kind of feeling sorry for myself that like I was oblivious to all these people that need help yeah. that I have the ability to like really help in a real way. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. so much. That was amazing. You're welcome. She's legit. So you came in here saying, I don't think I could be hypnotized. I didn't think I could, yeah. And you had tried to be I've been told that I'm hard to hypnotize because okay. I think too much. Like I'm constantly thinking. And did that... Was that a problem? No, not at all. So for all of you people out there know. who say, I don't think that I could be hypnotized. Mm -mm. You can, yeah. if you want to. Yeah. And that's what we do before 
you lie down, I sit there and we do exercises so that you understand that I am not hypnotizing you, you are hypnotizing yourself, and I am just there to guide you. So is that how it was yes. for you? 100%. Yeah. So practice makes perfect, and that's what I do. I want, I want to make sure if you come here from all, wherever you're coming from to do this, I want to make sure you have a successful session. So we practice and practice before you even lie down. So, good. This is probably the best money I've ever spent. Seriously. Thank you so much. Seriously. Thank you. So, in order for you to get a session, go to my website, albawyman.com. Click on the link that says hypnosis. Sign up for my newsletter. The newsletter comes out approximately once a month. And on that newsletter, there are links to calendars. Those calendars are only valid for that moment. And within minutes, those calendars are filled with, you know, appointments. So you've got to be really flat, fast and click on that. Took me two and a half years to get an appointment. Two and a half years he's been waiting and this Trying. was Trying. I get those emails and I click and boom, go. But you got it. I got it. So if you're meant to come here, you will. Mm -hmm. So thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it and you got something out of it. And I hope it's affected you in, a, in your own way. Thanks. Bye. Peace. Give me that hug. <laughs> that was awesome. Ooh.